groups are already here. So it's three G six. Is group six? Are all your members here? All members of group six already here. Okay, Ben, Steven here. Uh, yes, sir. I'm here. So, all members of your group already here. Under here. Is Amir here? Uh, hello, Doctor. I'm here. Yes, I'm here. All right. Mm. Atala here? Uh, yes, Doctor. I'm here. Uh, Zika. Zika here. Adiza. Yes, Doctor. Right. Um, Zaya. Uh, uh, Is he here? It's past three. Okay. So if you hear this sound, okay, uh, it means that you have uh, you have uh, five more minutes to to, to finish your talk. Okay. You have twenty minutes maximum, but if you can do it in fifteen minutes, uh, that would be great. Okay. Uh, so good uh, five, please. Please start your presentation. And uh, please switch on your, your video camera. Okay, Doctor. And can you begin? Pakai-pakai dekat ni, make sure you listen to the talk and you need to, to ask at least two questions to this group. Okay. Right, we start anytime. Doctor, see uh, my screen. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good uh, afternoon everyone. And my name is Kevin Prasanafif. I'm from uh, Team Group Six, and we will uh, present our project proposal. Uh, it is a website for a small business. First, uh, our group member. There are uh, eight of us, and four of us will present our project proposal uh, today. So the overview of our project. Uh, in the midst of pandemic, there are a lot of uh, business that has uh, been impacted by the pandemic. Uh, they have suffered uh, quite a lot by this coronavirus. And uh, we are intending to uh, help a small businesses by uh, increasing their uh, awareness uh, they we increase their uh, awareness by creating a website for them and help them to manage their social media <coughs> and then next for our collaborator will be presented by uh, Rafi Mikhail um, hello everyone my name is Rafi Mikhail Ilham, and um, I'll be presenting for the collaborator and the obstacle part. So our collaborator is uh, Arjuna Coffee. It's a small business that has just started their business in a food and beverages industry, which is located in Pekanbaru, Indonesia. As a, the business that just started, they need um, to hire employees and to increase its exposure. That's why we help them to build their social media audience and engagement by creating the website and managing their social media contents. Now, we're next to the uh, obstacle part. So, um, the first obstacle is the companies is still newly open and need more exposure. Uh, we cannot avoid that. The importance of the company to be acknowledged is really crucial. The company certainly needs contribution from society in order to develop and achieve the, their goal. So when a certain company has been noticed by the society, they can easily expand, expand their coverage. So the second is the lack of um, human resource. So small company is more likely to encounter the limitation to find someone for voluntary project. Often company will publicly announce when they are in, in the need of volunteer for a certain project. It will be one project contract. With the help of our project, we will ease the burden of the company to find human resource and contribute to arrange uh, the project. So um, I will pass for the next parts to my friend. Um, hello, guys. Uh, I'm going to be presenting the project uh, objectives and uh, the activ <coughs> activities we are going to be conducting. Uh, Kevin, can you move uh, this slide? OK. So our objective is, uh, since Arjuna Cup is a new found company, uh, their brand awareness is not really strong, and they, ha they already have um, an Instagram account, but it doesn't have a lot of followers, it's not really that popular, it's not uh, managed yet, uh, appropriately. So, our objectives are can be uh, conducted in three points. Uh, we want to increase the brand awareness, uh, so, me, so more people from Pekan Baru can uh, recognize the brand. And another thing we want to do, since uh, we are in the Corona uh, virus pandemic, so the business sale took a hit, and we want to increase it again because uh, since uh, a lot of people cannot go to the coffee shop uh, because that's going to be uh, bad uh, for their health. I mean, it's going to increase the spread of the virus. So we want to increase their sales uh, through online channels like the website, the Instagram, so people can order online. And uh, our third objective is going to be... Uh, Establishing a platform for the coffee shop and the customers to meet. Uh, can we move this out? Okay, fine. So the activities we are going to do first, we are going to establish a website and 
uh, that we can showcase our products and everything we have. Uh, second thing we are going to do is reboot the Instagram account. Uh, uh, our client has uh, ordered the new logo, so we designed the new logo, but we hasn't uh, started everything yet. But we have a logo, so we are going to reboot the Instagram account. We are going to delete everything, archive everything, and start over. And then we are going to promote the Instagram account and the website all together at the same time. And that is our proposed plan. Uh, next, we are going to go to the project timeline with my friend Aziza. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Zay and everyone. Uh, my name is Siti Silma Aziza, and now I'm going to explain the expected outcomes and the project timelines. So, by creating a website and social media for Arjuna Kavi, uh, we hope we can give uh, some impacts for them. The first one is increasing the business brand awareness uh, by promoting and advertising their uh, products. Uh, it will make the society uh, is more aware of the existence of the brand. Uh, the second one is establishing their business online presence because everything is online now so it's a must for every business to have a business online presence uh, the third one is helping out on their business opening promotion uh, because arjuna kavi has just started their business for a week or maybe two weeks so during this time it is a crucial to for their business development the last one is additional manpower because they don't really have much employee yet. So by doing this voluntary project, uh, we hope we can ease the burden of hiring an extra worker. So after we have finished our project, each group member ha should have developed their soft skill in some aspect. The first one is the critical thinking skills. We do this a lot, especially during a group discussion when we have to decide uh, which topic that we should choose or the NGO that we should approach. And also uh, during the process, we may face some unexpected, unexpected circumstances where we have to uh, take immediate action. So that's how we practice our critical thinking skill. Uh, the second one is a, communica um, a communication skills because this is a teamwork project which involves eight members and every member have a different point of view. So we should be able to communicate how we deliver our ideas or how to give a suggestions of others' ide ideas to avoid mis misunderstanding. Uh, the third one is improving our teamwork uh, because this is a teamwork project. So the project output is very dependent on how we collaborate between the members and the leadership skills is most, more, more to the group leader, which he will be able to lead and supervise the group. So our project online is divided into three phases. The first one is mostly focus on our ideas and how we will conduct the project. And we will start the project on the second month, which is on 24 of November. And we will have a four weekly meetings where we where each member update their progress because each member has a different job descriptions and we ha we will finish and finalize our project by 2nd of January 20 and, tw 20 and 21. That is our presentation. Anyone has a question? Thank you, Aziz. So, um, okay, bakar bakar dekan. Uh, please ask at least two questions. Uh, hi, Doctor. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, uh, I have a question. I have a question. Uh, who are going to manage the website and the social media once the project is done? Uh, you mean after we are done with uh, our projects at the very end? Yes. Uh, I think we can turn uh, turn everything to the hands of the client and we can fill them in on how we did, uh, like how was our process. For example, in social media management, some, uh, some companies uh, resort to the method of posting at least once a week or uh, twice a week just to keep uh, their account active. Uh, so we will just uh, fill them up on how we did everything, how we managed the website, and we will teach them and they can then turn their services into other professional people and they will take it from there. Okay. Uh, my next question is uh, regarding to the promoting the website and the social media account, is there any payment involved? Uh, you mean uh, uh, pay? <laughs> Yeah, to promote their page. Um, we are not getting paid, but if they want to promote I mean, using ads or Google Ads, I think that is, uh, uh, should pay for it. Not okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, uh, anyone else? Uh, other person? Do you, uh, don't have a question. I have a question. Uh, how how do you find these collaborators? Since uh, Arjuna Kofi uh, just established uh, last year, right? so how how did you find this collaborator? Is it by chance, or did you know someone who works there? Or? Uh, actually, I do, Doctor. Uh, the owner of the Arjuna Coffee is one of uh, the closest friend of my parents. Oh, so okay. I'm helping out uh, my friend's parents. Okay, that's good. Um, and you mentioned, I think, that you, sit, uh, you designed the company's logo, is it? Uh, so since the coffee shop is open uh, for uh, so quite some time now, uh, they do have uh, they do need a logo for for their uh, cup of coffee for their plastic cup. So actually, they do have a logo before before our, our starting uh, before we start to approach them. But they they want us to reboot the logo. Uh, I think I can show you the design we already proposed, but it, it doesn't, it, it wasn't, fi it isn't final yet. Sister. Wait. Uh, sorry, Ka Kaifan, can you show the new logo? Okay, friend, can you show us the logo? <laughs> okay, uh, here is the logo. As you can see here, this is the the this is the old one, the old logo, and this is our pro uh, proposed logo, but it's not uh, finalized yet. Seems nice. Okay. Also, you have started some work, so that's good. Um, right. 
thank you very much. Uh, to, uh, so I hope you uh, are successful in helping them in, in the business. And, and also make sure that your objectives are measurable. You know? uh, for example, you said that you want to increase the sale, so make sure that you have the figures now and then uh, later. Uh, the, the, in terms of brand awareness, so how, how do you want to measure that? So, so that we know that uh, your project is successful. <coughs> okay. All right, uh, so next group, uh, number seven, teams. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, right, thank you, guys. Right, next group. It's good if you, if you can finish early so that uh, you can all finish early. So we're ahead of time. Okay, next group, uh, teams and also uh, take by tips team, stand by to ask questions. And again, if you hear, uh, if you hear the sound, means that you have um, five more minutes to wrap up your presentation. Okay, you can start anytime. All right, let's start. Okay, anytime when you're ready. Right at the first setting up the slides. Uh, can you hear me, Doctor? Uh, uh yeah. Screen, screen, screen. Right. Right. Uh, uh, Assalamualaikum and hi and uh, good afternoon to Dr. Reza hi. and uh, fellow classmate. Uh, we are the teams uh, <clears throat> are about to present our Sulam project proposal, thinking and communication skill. Um, for for thinking and communication skill, so uh, our team consists of eight members, which is me myself, Muhammad Faiz Haiman, uh, Amirul Hadif as our leader, uh, Liana, Lukman, Hafi, uh, Lukmanul, Haikal, and lastly Marsa. <coughs> so next, so um, this is our present <coughs> presentation flow. We got eleven points to cover, so um, each one of these points will be uh, explained in details by respective uh, presenter. So my first, uh, the first one is uh, executive summary. So basically, every, ch every child in this world deserves to have an uh, education in their life. With proper education, we could produce a generation that is smart, be able to think critically, and thus be able to lead our country to prosperity. However, not everyone in Malaysia is fortunate enough to have decent education, especially around Asli children. We will work, um, so eventually in this um, project proposal presentation, um, basically you will see how we will work together with our collaborator, SUKA, which is stand for Persatuan um, Kebajikan Suara Kanak-Kanak, <clears throat> to provide some essentials for these children in order for them to have proper education. So I'm going to pass the presentation 
to our next presenter. Thank you. All right, next, we'll move to the overview of this proposal. So what is SULAM? SULAM stands for Service Learning Malaysia, University for Society. Uh, it is an initiative by the Ministry of Education and it was established in 2019. The aim of SULAM is to produce holistic, entrepreneurial and balanced graduates. That is, because, that is being said because in SULAM, students need to engage in activities that address the community needs together with structured opportunities, intentionally designed to promote student learning. Next slide. So our plan for SULAM is we, we are conducting uh, fundraising events to help the community. And in order to make that happen, we are looking forward to work with any NGO out there because the NGO knows more about our target audience and they also know what the community needs more. Uh, and the importance of this project is it provides assistance to people at times of need. It will also teach the community of the importance of donating. So I said before that we are conducting a fundraising event. So the fundraising strategies must be explored in detail so that my team could achieve successful fundraising events. Next, I will pass to the next presenter. Okay, hi, my name is Mahafi. So, uh, the collaborator that we have agreed to, to collaborate with is Suka Society. Uh, Suka Society is a Persatuan Kebajikan Suara Kanak-Kanak Malaysia. Uh, they work to protect and preserve the best interests of some of the most marginalized and vulnerable people in Malaysia. Suka Society was established in 2010 and in that relatively brief time has emerged a strong advocate for rights of those excluded from the fruits of development. Suka Society has also won the United Nations Malaysia Award in 2015 and, and Start Gordon Hart Awards in 2018. Uh, okay, so hello and good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Madri and now I will explain to you about the targeted group for our Sulam project. So, the target group for our project is the Orang Asli Children in Slim River, Gopeng, Gerik, Tapa, and Guamusang. Although there are pl plenty of villages for the Orang Asli community, we focused on these five areas because these are the specific areas our NGO is currently focused on. We all know that the Orang Asli community lives in remote areas, so there is less development currently in their respective areas, and COVID-19 made every development in our country even worse, and the communities in the remote areas are also highly impacted. The children in their community has been at, at a disadvantage in terms of their education for so long and struggled even more during this COVID-19 period. With the implementation of our project, the Orang Asli children will be huge, hugely benefited with education improvements such as school materials and tuition fees that will result in better, better education and development in their respective villages. So uh, I will pass on for the next presenter. Uh, so uh, I will explain about the problems or need identify. Uh, okay. There are several problems identified while planning this project. First and foremost, most of people are not familiar with circle society since they are focusing on a bigger company which perform better in marketing and publicity such as WWF. Uh, then they tend to have and give the financial support to this noun company compared to small NGO like uh, circle society. Okay. Other than that, some people are not aware of their lots of people who are there who struggle and need help in this COVID-19. So these are problems uh, that are identified while planning this project. And during this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, sponsor that has been supporting the Suka Society may have lost their pressure of their income since we know that we have the financial uh, problems during the COVID-19 and the economy is uh, not going well. So they cannot give financial aid to them as they usually did before the pandemic. Like if they give usually 100 bucks, so they will give 500 bucks. 
because the during the uh, this covid-19 pan, uh, pandemic uh, other than uh, other than that the business that has been run by secret society uh, to sub, to sustain their operation at funding project salaries are uh, are uh, not go smoothly also uh, uh, also uh, because of the covid-19 pandemic okay so i will pass to my friends My name is Omar Haikal and I will be presenting about the objective of our, um, of our project. So the main objective is to provide more resources to the NGO. Uh, resource here uh, means that any items that are needed to provide the students um, for their education needs. And after we have objective, we have our goals. Um, next. So our goals. Uh, so before that, um, the donation we will we, that we will receive will cover um, a few aspects, uh, including the school expenses, because uh, the teachers uh, and the society, the organization are given a fixed amount of ringgit um, in a month, and they use a portion of the money to provide. Um, school supplies and also like uh, a snack, a light snacks for the students, and they have to balance out their salary to do other things as well. Um, other than that, uh, we also covered their teaching assistance. Their uh, this teaching assistance is uh, an important supporting supportive role. Uh, they they assist the teachers in for for the students that require extra attention. Okay. Okay, to, to keep our project running smoothly, we have developed a preparation plan. There are four, there are four steps of preparation. Uh, the first step is we list all the project activities. We discuss together and decide the best and beneficial activities that we're going to do with the community. Next, we draw up a timeline for each task. This is to make sure all the tasks we need to do are executed on time. The third one is we summarize the scheduling of the main activities. So the project activities will running smoothly without any distribution, this uh, distraction. Lastly, we allocate tasks among the team. So all the members have their own responsibility. OK, the next one is our proposed activities that we're going to do with the community. The first one, the main, the main activities we're going to do is fundraising. Uh, there are some, uh, there are three more uh, sub, sub activities in fundraising uh, that we're going to do. The first one is design poster that uh, Luk, Luk Manuel and Marsa will take the responsibility. The second one is build donation website. Hadif has already built the website. So everyone uh, that want to donate can go through the website. So the third one is we we all gonna distribute the poster online to all the social platform. Uh, so all the members will gonna do that. Okay, the next second main our activities is writing letter. So we're gonna we're gonna writing a letter to them. To uh, express to express our feelings or anything that we want to say to them through the letter. So by December 11, we're gonna receive uh, a letter from them. So I'm gonna pass to the next members. Next slide. So here is our group members. Uh, it consists of Amra Hadif, which is me. Liana, Lokman, Mahafi, Lokmanul, Haikal, Faiz, and Marsa. Um, most of these members have many experiences in their first study, which they joined the college projects, but also 
the university's project. And this slide shows that this is our organization chart for the Sulans project. Uh, they agreed to appoint me as the leader for this project. And we point out Liana as the secretary and other members are the active members. Next. Uh, all right, so for the expected outcome and impact on the target group, that is the children of the Orang Asli community is, the children will experience a more improved quality of education following the providence of proper school materials and tuition fees that, do, that they do not have to worry about. The improvement in their quality of education will also improve their desire for knowledge that can also convince a better future development for the community in the remote areas. Uh, next, the society field involved with our fundraising project will raise their awareness towards the development of the Orang Asli community. They will improve their sense of giving also towards the needy and this will help establish a strong relationship among communities of different backgrounds. And for our group, we will enhance our skills in managing programs especially fund-based and enhance our communication skills when cooperating with NGOs and remote communities like the Orang Asli community. And we can also analyze our weaknesses during the project duration to improve and establish a more arranged and well-planned project in the future. And so I will pass on the next one. Yeah, so sorry about that. My computer restarted out of the so our project timeline is like this as you can see here. Um, we mainly uh, focus on implementing our activity from uh, starting from the, uh, week six until uh, you can see here until the end of week twelve. Then we can start to make our report and submit it. Um, the we we take a bit of time to find the NGO as. Uh, our first plan uh, didn't go uh, well, so we need to find several other NGOs. So that's why you can see here it takes um, about two weeks to find an NGO that we can collab with. Um, so that's all from my part. Okay, next. Uh, for the conclusion of this project, uh, okay. This project focuses to assist Sukar society by making a fundraise, so we can help their by providing financial aid. Okay, this uh, the conclusion of the project. Our target for this fundraise activity is a uh, one hundred thousand ringgit. Since then, uh, we got a uh, hundred ringgit for only three days, so I think we can manage to get one hundred thousands. This uh, fundraising activity start on 9 November 2020 and end uh, on 11 January 2021. This proposal aims to support circle society by providing financial aid. By doing this, uh, we hope that we can reduce their burden and encourage people for help others. Okay, thank you. That's all from us. Uh, thank you, uh, team. So, uh, rep from Okay, got it. These are these two questions. Uh, all right, okay. Uh, hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. All right, yeah. so um, I have one question. Um, so you guys uh, collaborated right now with uh, Sukha Society, right? Yes, yes. So um, I believe you guys have discussed with Sukha Society and also have come to agreements like what you guys are planning to do, like uh, do the contact, the posters, all the, those things, right? So I'm just wondering, like, what are the challenges that you guys had uh, when it comes to, you know, when it comes to uh, dealing with that NGO, like so far right now? Just wondering. Yeah. So I'll answer to that questions. Uh, uh, very nice questions, Mune. Uh, so the challenges, you're asking about the challenges, right? So for now, I think uh, the first challenges was uh, we asked them what they need. So they have, they are connecting actually many projects like they're protecting the uh, survivors of sex trafficking victims and then one of the project was um, helping the Orang Asli and then they, they want 
to know more about us, like what our what was our plan for this project. And then we said to them, oh, any fundraising activities would be nice to us. And then we had a really detailed discussion with them. We emailed them like for one week. We had a really detailed discussion and then we came out to this project, which is a fundraising event for the Orang Asli. So we chose Orang Asli for several reasons because I think the Orang Asli deserves a better education, just like any Malaysians out there. It should not be separated from the community. As we can see here, like the Orang Asli had a really uh, limited access to education. That's why we chose Orang Asli. Am I answering your question? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Eric. Hello, uh, I'm Ashikin. I have one more question. All right. How do you plan to build the donation website? I'd like to know that. Actually, uh, we did not build the website. Actually, it is more to setting up the website because the Suka Society they had a collaboration with the Gift.Asia. The fundraising happens on the Gift.Asia website. Do you guys want to okay. see the website? I can show I you should. guys. All right. You guys can see my... Yeah. All right, so this is the website, the Suka Society. They collab with Give the Asia, Give the Asia. So what we did was we click the link and then we set up the Give the Asia website. From so when people want to donate, they will click this donate button and every donation will go directly to the Suka Society. Oh, okay. Understand? Okay. So Thank you. You, you guys out there who wants to donate, you guys can go to this website, Give the Asia. Uh, and then care for Orang Asli. This is okay. our fundraising page. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Right. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, okay, just wondering, how long has Suka been established? You guys know? How long has this society been established uh, in Malaysia? Does anyone know? Uh, so Suka years, years. has been established since 2013 and okay. in 2015 they won the award which was stated earlier in the slides. Right. Um, okay. Um, so first, uh, you need to provide a title for your project. Can you put, put up Sudan? Yes, Sudan is what everybody, everyone needs to do, uh, but you need a specific title for the project that you're, you're going to do. Okay. Uh, just right. give a proper title, okay? And for the objective, I see that you combine it with your goals, right? Um, please ensure that, um, if possible, list, list out the, the, the objective or the goals uh, in numeric form, maybe three, uh, three objectives. I think the goals and objectives can be combined uh, into one, either objective or goal. Uh, so that you can measure the uh, you can measure the the successfulness of each of the objectives. For example, uh, if you're targeting uh, a fundraising of one hundred ringgit, right? So that's uh, something that you can measure, right? So after the project, so if you have actually reach that target, so it means that you have actually achieved this that particular objective. So uh, uh, write the objective such that uh, each of the objectives can be uh, measured. Okay. And for the timeline, I know it's just a plan, but if you manage to complete the project earlier, uh, that is also fine. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you. Uh, think beyond. Uh, next group. 
number four going to be on. And the group that is going to ask questions is a randomly generated. So please uh, listen to the talk and make sure you have at least two questions to ask. Okay, you can start anytime. If you hear the sound, that means that you have uh, five more minutes to complete the talk. Okay, anytime you can. We can begin. Okay, can start the tip. Yeah, please proceed. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, our group named Think Beyond will present our proposal and our project name Fun of Fortune. Okay, next. We have agreed on making a fundraising project to help uh, by Tusna, which is located in Kuantan, uh, by collecting funds uh, using social media completely. We choose social media because uh, this day, uh, usually all people uh, have social media, so it will be more easier to approach uh, everyone uh, to make uh, fundraising using social media. Okay. This project is important to help uh, the orphan uh, running their activities and to lessen their burdens by collecting the funds. Uh, we also can learn how to collaborate professionally with NGOs, uh, handle fundraising projects, uh, create posters and videos, and also manage social media accounts. Okay, next. Okay, as you can see here, our organizational chart, uh, project advisor is Dr. Muhammad Reza bin Zaba, and I am as a project leader. Uh, my secretary is Muhammad Azri Anwar, and we have uh, we have four bureaus in our project, which is public and relationship uh, bureaus, economy bureaus, publicity bureaus, and multimedia bureaus. Okay, next. Okay, so this is our team. Uh, I am Jeb uh, as project leader and also in Economy Bureau. My task is to keep track of the donation and to write uh, the details uh, of the donor. Okay, next I will pass to Nepu to introduce uh, himself. Okay, Nepu. Sorry, okay. My name is Mama Azri Anwar and you can call me Nepu. I will be the secretary of this team and my tasks are filing the documents and will help the media bureau to make their posters and videos. Next, I will pass to Afi Aiman. Okay, uh, my name is Mama Afi Aiman and I will in charge in economy bureau and I will assist Jack in keep track uh, the donation and write the details of the donor. Next, I would pass to Hazik. Right, Assalamualaikum Doctor and my fellow friends. So, I'm my name is Hazik uh, and I'm in the Public and Relations Bureau. So, what I do is actually uh, uh, connect and contact with the uh, Baitul Husna Kuantan and then update them with any activities that we do. Then next, I, I give it to Adam. Okay, Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Uh, I I am working with Hazik on public and relations. So as Hazik said, we're acting as a medium between the their organization and our organization. So uh, that's for me. I think I'll pass on to Iwe for the publicity. Assalamualaikum and good evening to Doctor everyone. Uh, my name is Mama Ikwan. 
and you can call me Yue. And my role in this team is as a publicity bureau. So my task is create creating posts in Facebook and Instagram. So I will pass to Fit Ivan. Yeah, Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon, Doctor, and to all my friends. Uh, my name is Muhammad Afiq Ifan bin Manor, and you can call me Afiq. And I'm in multimedia, and my job in this project is to create and monitor social media accounts, such as Instagram and Facebook. I'm also responsible to create poster and advertisement or videos for this fundraise. So next, I will pass to Adham. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Adham bin Aswan. You can call me Dahir. I'm also under Bureau Multimedia. Basically, my task is to help Afiq to do his, his stuff during the project. Next, I will pass to Hazik to continue the presentation. All right, thank you, Adham. So, as we know, the Sulam project uh, encourages us to collab with a community partner. So, our community partner that we have chosen is an orphanage which is in Kuantan Pahang called Baitul Husna. And then uh, it is an orphanage that was founded and managed by Angkatan Belia Islam Malaysia, uh, Abim Negeri Pahang, and it established in March 2010. So originally the place was uh, in Batu Hitam and then in 2015 it, they changed their place uh, to Kampung Pelindung. All right. so next. So this is our target group. So of course it is an orphanage, so they target orphans, also for children, and especially for this orphanage, special for this, uh, this uh, orphanage, they target socially problematic teenage girls. Next. All right, so these are the few activities that they have done in the past. So as you can see in the first picture, they, they do some gardening and gardening activities. And in the second picture, uh, they celebrated Sambutan Hari Kemerdekaan and then the third picture they had some Fadu Ain class uh, and then the fourth picture they uh, went and, and gave uh, some donations to the surrounding community of, of uh, Kuantan Pahang of their place and then the fifth uh, picture is uh, one of the activities which is baking lessons so uh, next okay Okay, so these are the problems that we had identified. The first one is uh, we are in COVID-19 pandemic era, which makes a lot of people suffer economic problems, including orphanage. The second one is financial problem. Baitul Husna received less financial problems, so that why we are here to help them continue their good deeds by finding, finding funds for them. Okay, the third one is platform problem. Baitul Husna currently has only Facebook page and here we are to create more platform for them. And the last one is fundraise problem because uh, because of they have less platform, they have a few people know about them. So they are not enough donors. Okay, move to the our objective next. Okay, so this is our objective, project objective. The first one is to be able to promote fundraising on social media platforms. As we know, everything is online now. So that's why we choose social, social media platform. The second one is gain at least 1,000 ringgit in the number of funds from 16 November until 14 December 2020. Uh, more gains are, more, are much better. And the third one is to gain extra soft skills by collaborating with our NGO since it is very important for all of us in the future. And the last one is to be able to promote the good cause of the NGO to the general public. And then uh, I move to the next point, I will pass to my friend. Thank you. Okay, thank you Afiq. Okay, I'm going to present about the proposal activity. So first we got contacting the NGOs and we already done that. And for the second, we'll be creating Facebook page and Instagram account for our fundraising. And third, we'll design our poster and rendering the video to be the advertisement for the fund fundraising. And the fourth, we'll be creating, uh, writing creative caption and post it to social media to attract many people to funds. And then we're going to share the post to others in Facebook and Instagram story and also WhatsApp. 
And lastly, um, keep track of the donation by listing the donor's name and addresses. So next, um, so we expected to, we expect can we expect uh, to manage social media to handle the fundraising, and to we are going to learn about the NGO goals and objective, and we also expect to give a realization to society that many people need help at this this moment, at this situation. So next, um, this is our project timeline. So for the first week until the fourth week, uh, we managed to form a group and distribute the roles. After that, we contacting the NGOs and preparing our proposal. As this week, or week five, we are presenting our proposals, proposal and in the future, we expect to we plan to creating our social media account, designing our posters and videos, and creating the creative caption. And after all of that, we are preparing our report. And lastly, we are going to present our report. So to conclude, I will pass to our leader, Jeb. Okay, thank you, Nepo. So in conclusion, we hope that we can help by Tul Husna uh, by gain fund at least 1,000 ringgit from 16 November until 14 December, uh, so that we can lessen the burden of Baitosna, uh, so they we they can continue help others, uh, especially the orphanage and the problematic uh, teenage girls. Okay, next. Okay, that's all from us. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, brother. So, randomly generated glass and the question. Um, hello, Sir Conductor. Uh, so I have um, I have one question. First of all, uh, I have two questions. Uh, first is um, for your fundraising, what is the platform that you're going to use uh, in the sense of uh, what is the fundraising platform that you are going to collect the funds? Um, are you going to use any web, uh, web platform or are you going to uh, directly uh, uh, let the donors to directly uh, donate the funds into their accounts or something like that? And then the second Second question is, um, if uh, you, if the the fund that you collected will be uh, channeled from you to the uh, to the NGO, uh, what is how are you going to in I mean in what form is the fund going to be distributed to uh, distributed to? Is it the form of uh, money or in the form of products? Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you, Zaki, for the wonderful question. Uh, so your first question is uh, about our platform of uh, where the, where are the funds actually going to go. So yes. actually, um, the first thing they, that the donors want to uh, need to do if they want to donate to the Baito Husna, uh, first they need to contact our um, our one of our bureaus, which is the donations bureau, and then uh, they they will provide their name and their address. So and then uh, they will uh, say say how much they want to donate, and then uh, they will donate directly to the uh, bank account of the by by to Husna. So there's there's no medium. So just donate uh, to them. But we have to keep track uh, of the names and of names of the donors and the addresses because of uh, something called tax fraud. So uh, yeah, hope that answers the question. Um, yes, thank you. I think for the second question. The second question? Yeah, the second question uh, is you're asking on what will be the form of the donation, right? Either in in objects or money. So to answer that question, it's actually in the form of money because uh, we'll be using bank accounts to transfer the money. So it's not uh, in the form of uh, any any like uh, what you can say like brass or any other type of donation it's money maybe yeah i hope that answers your question 
Yes, thank uh, you. Uh, hello, I'm also from the group Sam as Decree, and I have a question too. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 So my question is, if the donor do not want to expose their name and they want to, uh, like I mean, they want to donate without giving their name, is it okay? And my next question is, since the donors is directly donating into the NGO's account, so how will you keep track? Like, how do you measure your the? I would say the impact of your project towards the donations because you cannot keep track since they directly don't donate the money into the NGO account. Okay, uh, thank you for the question, Chen Yi. Uh, so uh, the, there's, there's no other choice. They, they need to give the names to us, but we will not expose it to anyone. We will keep it to ourselves. Okay, hope that's answer, the, the answer to the question. Okay. And just now for my second question, like, how do you keep track your the impact of this project? Like, how much have you advertised about these donations? Because since the donors directly banding into the NGO NGO's account, so you cannot measure like how much this project has impacted to the you know the donations. You get what I mean? Uh, may I ask? May I, may I answer that question? Um, I think the Economics Bureau is going to the keep track and keep track the the transferring session for our fundraising, and by then we can keep track how many the 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 progress that we actually made for the fundraising. And I hope this answers your question. All right, answer. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, okay, I have several comments. Um, okay, your one of your objectives okay, uh, is to gain extra soft skill. I think um, this objective may be difficult to measure because you need to measure something that is now and then later when you complete your project. Right? So uh, perhaps this particular objective can be removed. I think the rest of the objectives were, uh, I think, somewhat can be measurable. Uh, so that's fine. Um, and following up on a uh, question by Zeki, since you're, you're being the middleman, I mean, uh, people need to approach you first uh, before they can donate, right? Um, um, don't you think that it might hinder your efforts of uh, collecting the funds because you don't reveal the account numbers for Bytel Rosa, right? Meaning that if somebody wants to donate, they need to contact you first and then, and then you only then you, you would reveal the account number. Is that correct? Or? It's uh, uh, what you said is about we being the middleman, right? I uh, sorry, but I couldn't like clearly hear your question just now. Uh, so if somebody wants to donate, okay. So uh, I think Hazik said that um, the the person needs to contact you, and then you because you need to write their names and the amount that they need, they want to donate, right? Yeah. So in order to do so, they need to uh, have the account number for buy to lose that. But I think you you won't reveal the account numbers publicly, or in order to get the account number, the contact you guys first. Uh, how does it work? Sorry, my my cat is playing with wires. Uh, yeah, so I think to answer your question, yeah. <laughs> I, I think to answer your question is because uh, this is to avoid tax fraud because by giving us their names and their addresses, uh, this is to like, because at, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of the year, the like 
they'll have to give their tax report or something. So this, um, by, by having the records of the donations, so they know where the money is coming from. So basically it's to avoid, like, to legitimize the, the transactions money. Okay, so, so donors need to contact you before they can get the account number. Is it? Uh, from what I know, uh, yeah, but I I'll, I think I'll do some more research if if we can like better this system, like you said, and maybe hinder the process of donation. Yeah, because we want as many people to donate. Uh, maybe based on I'm not sure the. The bank statement of uh, Vitalis now, so you can keep track based on the transactions in the account numbers or something like that. If they uh, want to share it with you, uh, yeah. But you can think of you know something that uh, without people contacting you first, they can actually uh, directly donate. But at the same time, you are also able to keep track of the money coming in during your uh, campaign period. Right. Right. Uh, thank you for the suggestion, Doctor. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, next group. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Take, uh, take thank you, Doctor. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, you're up next. And group six is supposed to ask questions. Okay, can everyone see? Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe we can start. Okay. Oh, you can begin. Uh, okay. uh, right. All right, um, assalamualaikum and good evening to Dr. Reza and my fellow classmates. Um, I'm Munir from group Kate Batik, and right now we are going to present a proposal of an interesting project that we will be working on. So the title of our project is Bringing Everyone Online. So why we said bringing everyone online, you will see later why in our presentation. So um, for our presentation, we will be going through a few topics or a few sections. So first, we'll talk about the NGOs that we'll be working with and the community that you are targeting. Uh, next, we will explain the problems and needs of the NGO that we have uh, identified. Also, we're going to clarify the objectives of our program, like what we're going to achieve. Um, after that, we we'll lay out the plans and activities of our project. Also, I'm going to introduce um, the group members so their skills and their proficiencies and how that uh, fit within our uh, job roles or tasks that we are going to do. And also we're going to explain the expected outcome of this project and its impact towards uh, society. And then uh, the timeline of the project and lastly the conclusion. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce my uh, group members. So um, I'm Munir, uh, the group leader. Also, I'm going to introduce uh, Naim, Tengku Naim. He's from uh, AI department. Also, we have Nurul Ashikin. She's from data science. And then we have Haris Haikal. Haris Haikal, he's from IS department. Uh, and then we have Iza Hanafi. Iza Hanafi, he's from AI. We also have Saiful Amirun, Sa Saiful, Muhammad Saiful Amri. Uh, he's from IS, and also Nurul Iza. He's, she's also from IS. So I'm going to pass to uh, Iza to explain the NGO that we are uh, working with. Thank you, Munne. Um, for the collaborators and target group, uh, I'm going to present it. So uh, our collaborator is Yellow House KL. It is found by Sham Priya Marimutu. She is now the founder and the president. Uh, so the organization was created in 2011 and it improves lives for homeless people, urban poor and refugee communities within Selangor and KL. 
So uh, as we see in the picture, back. As we see in the picture, uh, the large one is uh, for the unseen tours mural that has been launched by Mayor. And for the bottom one is the project that has been done by Yellow House KL for the homeless people. The next one is our target groups. We do have two types. The first one is direct participants. Uh, it, it contains for University of Malaya students and general public. For University of Malaya students, we are targeting all of the students. It includes uh, from foundation, from undergraduate and postgraduate students, uh, include um, include the uh, with mix race with mixed races and gender. Uh, for the indirect beneficiaries, it is for B40 community, especially for women who wants to start a uh, woman who wants to start a small business. That's all from me. Okay, thank you, Iza. Uh, I'm Shikin. Next, I'm going to be presenting the problems and needs identified for the project. Um, after communicating with Yellow House, our team has found out a few problems that B40 communities faces in starting up businesses. The first one would be lack of capacity and knowledge. What it means by this is that this is after the business opens and the example is for them to hire staff or to buy tools. Next is um, lack the beans to acquire the social capital, which can be defined as a situation where these people do not have wide networks or connection or social interaction that could provide them more business opportunities. Um, the next one is lack insulation from business risk. For example, they do not have insurance to protect the businesses just in case an accident or disaster happens. So when an accident actually happens, they suffer a tough process to get started again. Um, the next problem is having the next problem is having no expertise and limited resources. We have found out that some B40s who want to start a business from home, they do not know where and how to start. They also require money to buy gadgets and also uh, money to create websites to manage their business online. Last but not least, one of the most important factor is they need funds to improve business skills. So these are the listed problems that we have identified and highlighted for our project. Thank you and I'll pass this presentation to Izzat. Right. Uh, Assalamualaikum to Dr. Reza and all my fellow friends. Um, our, uh, our main, our two main objectives is the first one is organize a fundraising to help provide equipment to improve the skills of the marginalized communities. The second is to raise awareness regarding the vulnerable communities. The first one, uh, the fundraising is we aim to collect RM one two thousand ringgit, uh, as they can be used as micro loans for the NGOs to buy gadgets and pay professionals in providing workshops to teach basic knowledge needed to improve their skills. Second, uh, it also works as a foundation for the B forty beneficiaries to start and develop their business to a higher level. The third one, uh, skills plan to be taught to the community will help them gain a source of income while working from home, especially during times of lockdown. So about the raising awareness is we aim to raise awareness among university students regarding the lack of opportunities faced by the less fortunate communities. Second, we aim to also educate students of efforts from NGOs such as Yellow House, our collaborator, in providing aids to these communities and how they could partake in these activities. Uh, that's all for me. I'll pass it to Tekunaim. Thank you. 
Thank you, Izzat. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Reza and everyone. I'm Naim and I'll continue on the proposed activities of our project. Thanks. When we think of suitable activities that could come as benefit to our chosen NGO and to us, of course, we take a step back and think of the goals of our project. What do we want to achieve through our activities and with who do we want to achieve this with? For us, uh, next, okay. For us, it comes down to two major goals. That is to raise funds to support provision of workshops and gadgets to the communities, growing their businesses online, and increase awareness among students on the difficulties faced by marginalized communities. As such, it becomes apparent that for us, our target participants consist of University of Malaya students and direct participants, and the B40 communities as our indirect beneficiaries. Uh, next. By taking a look at the breakdown of our proposed activities, we have of course fundraising as our main activity. We do this with correlations to our second activity, creation of donation posters. Since we propose to volunteer remotely due to the current situation, we intend to take advantage of social media platforms by curating and sharing eye-catching posters, humbly seeking for donations. And lastly, to complete our mission of spreading awareness, we also intend to curate dedicated posters addressing our proposed problem and efforts by NGOs such as Yellow House. We hope by this initiative that we are able to inspire and increase the number of students involving themselves in volunteering activities, especially in bringing technology, our forte as the young generation, to less fortunate communities, especially when it's much needed in these times. Note that we also propose that to do these activities for roughly four to five hours a week for a month, in order to complete our hours while making sure that we do not clash with our studies. That will be all from me regarding our proposed activities. Therefore, next, presenting our group members specific job roles, I'll pass it over to Saiful. Thank you. Now I will be presenting about the group member and each member job roles. Next slide. Okay, first, the team strength that we discovered throughout our session is we have high adaptability and understanding as most of the members have done volunteering outside and inside the university and one of the members have done communal work and engaged with B40 community in Jasin, Malacca. So that means we have high adaptability and understanding about the community that we are trying to engage with. Second, most of the members also have past fundraising experiences. As example, I have done fundraising activities to fund the project in the college in the previous semester. And I believe these skills will help to find a creative idea to raise our funds effectively. Next, we also have a great communication and social skills. As we all know, each of the members have done soft skills tests and also Munir, as example, have been a moderator for a few talks and forum. And we believe that with this skill, we also will engage with the community effectively. And lastly, we are proficient in publicity related skills and experience. As example, Munir, Tengku Naim, and Haris Haikal in the group are proficient in graphic designing, photography, videography, and anything else regarding the publicity. And with these skills, we believe that we can help Yellow House organization to publicize them more, to raise their fund, to help other P40 community too. Next slide. Now I will be describing each of the group member. First, Munir Bin Muhammad Rani as the leader. Munir is proficient in photography, videography and graphic design. Munir also has been creating content in social media such as Twitter. Next, Tengku Ahmad Naim Nuruddin. He is the deputy leader and will be assisting Munir in monitoring the group work. Tengku Naim also experienced in graphic designing facilitating, and has also been active in volunteering. Next slide. Nurul Ashikin Binti Muhammad Nasir as our secretary. 
She also has been engaging with the Yellow House community, which we are engaging with. She has few collaborating and workshop organizing experiences, and she is also active volunteering and facilitating. Next is Haris Haikal. He is a coordinator for the group. He is also he also involved in a few fundraising and community service before. He is also proficient in video editing, such as Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. Next slide. Next, we have Izzat Hanafi bin Abdul Razak. He is our elaborator. Izzat has been involved and organized a few a foods and necessities charity to the poor people before and have been involved in COVID-19 awareness campaign to the frontliners. Next, me, Muhammad Saifur Amri, I have been active in volunteering and fundraising experiences and have been facilitating actively. Lastly, we have Nurul Iza as the resource investigator. She is also experienced in mentoring and facilitating and have been organizing competition in a few level. With this description, we believe that the Yellow House organization will rely on us confidently to engage the fundraising with B40 community effectively. Next, I'm giving the turn to Hari Saikal for expected outcome. Uh, doctor, can we wait for the Azan? Doctor? Uh, Assalamualaikum and good evening to all my friends. Uh, I'm going to present the expected outcome and impact on society and group. Okay, the, there are two outcomes we are expecting from the project. The first one is meet the financial target for the fundraising. And the second one is raise enthusiasm and support to B40 communities from university students. Uh, this is the impact we are we can conclude from the project. The first one is to society. There are two targets to society. The first one is B40 communities itself, which is improve business related skill and expand their business through new markets. The second one is small time entrepreneurs able to start their business equipped with current technology and own a fine website. This can be achieved from the fundraising. We will back, we lend a small loan, buy gadgets, and do a website hosting. And we also want to encourage the society, mainly the university student, to involve in volunteer activities. For impact to the group, we have ability to build a mental relationship, especially among the group and the NGO. The next one is creativity, imagination, and entrepreneurial attitude towards the fundraising. Uh, the third one is sensitivity to the needs of volunteer and the donors. Like, uh, serve a medium to the donors to donate their money. 
And the last one is the ability to motivate others and work as part of the team. That's all for me. All right, moving on to the project timeline. All right, so um, for last week, last week is week four. So we have uh, search for the NGO and also as well as preparing the proposal. So right now, uh, this week, we are now presenting the proposal presentation. So that's done. So for uh, the week after that, starting from week six until week 10, uh, we're going to do uh, poster designing, social media posting and fundraising, as well as uh, project monitoring. So we plan to do that for five weeks um, until week 10. And then uh, after that, we're going to do to write a report as well as uh, obtain the evaluation from the Yellow House. And lastly, we will write the uh, final project report. So that's our um, rough timeline of our project. So in conclusion, um, we hope that from the project, um, we could help the marginalized communities uh, to adapt their businesses, especially in these uh, tough times. We also hope that our group experience in multimedia, uh, we hope that from our skills, uh, we hope that we could help to make good posters and as well as create awareness through social media uh, to support their uh, to support their uh, their needs. We also hope that um, from from this project, we hope to be part of a movement in overcoming disparity, especially in the B40 community. So um, that's all from us. Uh, thank you for listening. And is there any questions that anyone wants to ask? All right. Uh, thank you. Good uh, luck. So. Uh, group five, uh, please ask uh, at least two questions. This group. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm. My name is Atala, and I'm. Uh, I'm from uh, group six, and I would like uh, to ask uh, Kek Batix groups a couple of questions. Uh, first off, uh, what is your background on or reasoning to choose this particular NGO or company? So um, for that question, uh, so you asked uh, what is the reason why we choose Yellow House, right? So Yellow House, um, Yellow House is a NGO that helps the uh, communities in around KL in um, in helping the uh, marginalized community in uh, in giving like help such as uh, you know uh, like food supplies um, if you go to the website a yellow house uh, you can see actually they've done quite a lot of things um, one of it is uh, giving food supplies uh, doing grocery uh, especially in this COVID right so they've done that and um, and also um, we've well, we have made our discussions with them with yellow house uh, they Right now, they are planning to um, to help the B40 communities, which is the communities that uh, to help the community to um, to to help support their businesses. So right now, we are relying on mostly on social media, right? So we are trying to so their house is trying to search for volunteers in terms of finding. Uh, giving the right support in terms of, you know, the teachings of, um, you know, trying to make a website or trying to uh, use social media to promote their businesses. So those are the things that your house is uh, try currently trying to do. And we are trying to provide uh, financial help to support their uh, organization. So uh, does that answer your question, Atala? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, my right. second question is, what kind of small businesses or uh, uh, what what can what kind of example of the small businesses that uh, that you guys expected to help from the B40 40 community? Uh, so you are asking this small businesses, right? Uh, what kind of example? What what the example are of the 
small businesses? What what kind of small businesses? Um, for that one, uh, actually, um, yeah, how Zinis has specifically mentioned like what kind of small businesses uh, they are uh, actually you know trying to support. But what I can see is because they are in KL, right? So um, uh, the small businesses are like uh, the ones that you know those kind of uh, stalls in the side of the road where you can see like they're selling nasi lemak. Uh, yeah, those kind of businesses like that I can see what your house it what yellow house is trying to uh, support. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, I think my final question is uh, did I think you guys did you guys mention uh, about gadgets right? You will have uh, will, you, you will have uh, the business to get familiar with the gadgets right? Yes. Uh, yes. Can I ask what kind of gadgets that you would like to accommodate to the small businesses? So for the gadgets, um, so in order to run the business, uh, small business, or yeah, uh, in order to run the small business, uh, you need like a, at least at least like a phone, right, uh, or a smartphone, so you can run, uh, you can uh, connect to the internet and then run your social media apps, or uh, contact or uh, you know, contact anyone. So um, so for that part. Um. Yeah, those are the gadgets that we are uh trying. We are you know. We hope that the beef communities could uh use. So um. So yeah, those are the 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 gadgets, the example gadgets that we're trying to suggest to Yellow House. Okay, I, I thank you very much. I think that's it all for me. I think uh, maybe my teammate would, I would like to answer a question. Thank you, Kek Batik. All right, thank you, Antena. Good luck. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Antena, for your question. Um, uh, hello? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, this is. Uh, okay, so my question is, uh, so your goal for the fundraising is 2,000 ringgit, right? Uh, so do you have other plans other than donation if if in case the number didn't reach the 2,000 ringgit? That's all. Uh, I'll take this question. Um, as we previously mentioned, like you said, we declared that we target 2,000 ringgit, but we also uh, mentioned that this NGO or Yellow House is also looking to provide gadgets to these communities in order to help them build businesses. So what we may be, what we could possibly do, and it's also subject to discussion with Yellow House because it depends on what they need as well. We could probably ask for donations in terms of secondhand gadgets or like how the how social media and online communities are helping students. We could do that with the communities as well. However, again, this would be subject to discussion in Yellow House because we would be they would be majorly administrating the gadgets that we even if donated, they need, they will be needed needed to administer these uh, gadgets and distribute them around. So I would say it may cause a bit of difficulties, but it is uh, subject to discussion. And that would be an interesting form of donation as well. Thanks for your input. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, for the input. Um, okay, I guess uh, one comment, maybe uh, yeah, that question already. Um, uh, one of the objectives is to raise awareness, right? Um, mm -hmm. So somehow you need to have some way of measuring this. Okay, uh, now and after you have completed your project. So if somehow you can measure the level of awareness. Uh, you know, it increases. So how how are you gonna how are you gonna measure this? So if you think it's not, if it cannot be measured, then you can reword or. Uh, state another objective. Um, 
that's that's my comment. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, okay, that's it for your presentation. <clears throat> All right. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for the input. Uh, okay. Uh, next group. Uh, randomly generated group. And uh, group five uh, needs to uh, ask questions. Okay, may I start, Doctor? Uh, yeah, please. Okay, so, uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, and a very good afternoon to Dr. Reza, yeah. and of course to everyone. So today, uh, we, randomly generated, we are going to present our project proposal on our project, which is Digital Learn, Empowering Education with Technology. So, uh, before I go any further, uh, I want to introduce the group members uh, of our team. So, <clears throat> next slide. Yes, uh, so our group members consist of eight uh, students. Of course, there's me, Zakir Iskandar Bizraidi, as the project leader. And then we have Chong Jamun as the secretary, Muhammad Farid Adli, bin Muhammad Fakhru Razi, and Muhammad Azri Hanif, bin Muhammad Fikri, as the technician in the technical uh, division. And then Elaine Yong Yujin. Chen Yi, Muhammad Irfan bin Nasruddin, and Muhammad Azhan Farhan bin Idris as the operational team, uh, as uh, the uh, coordinator in the operational uh, team. So to proceed with the presentation, I uh, pass the presentation over to Chen Yi for the overview and his parts. Okay, thank you, Zachary. So a very good evening to everyone. So now I'm going to talk about the uh, our the overview of our project. So our project is a, uh, of course a Sulam project, but what we did is uh, what we're going to do is a direct Sulam, but in uh, indirect manner, which means that we are going we are not going to do this physically, but through online and it's virtually. And our project is aims to publicize the basic understanding of computer science among uh, the teenagers. So how are we're going to do this. We are going to conduct a webinar for students from secondary school level. And next, we are going to move on to the collaborators to know deep, more deep about the project. So our collaborator is an NGO, uh, which is the Pusat Tuition Bimingan Jaya. So this tuition, tuition center mainly consists of primary and secondary school students. And the owner of this Tuition center is Mrs. Ng Yeni. So what do what does this collaborator do? Is uh, she will assist us uh, in promoting our program, uh, as well as uh, also in the registrations of the participants. And at the right side, it, there is a Facebook Facebook page of this NGO. And next is our target group. Uh, as mentioned just now. This tuition center has students from primary level, which is about uh, seven years old, to secondary school level, which is uh, up to 17 years old. But after our internal discussions and decisions, we have chosen 12 to seven years old students. Uh, this is uh, considered because of uh, we believe that this uh, range of age for the students will be comparatively more mature. Their, uh, in terms of their mindset and also in this age they will have to start to think about what they actually like or what they are interested in to choose their uh, future path and regarding this we will uh, introduce and uh, uh, give them some approach to computer science as a um, as an option for their future choice when they want to enroll into the higher ed educational level and about this target group, our target number of participants is around 20. Uh, that's all for me. I will pass to I pass the presentation to the next speaker, my teammate Farid. Okay, thank you, Chen Yi. Uh, can you hear me, Doctor? Uh, yeah, yeah, 
All right, so good afternoon to Dr. and my fellow friends. So as we can see during this pandemic, uh, software, software application system play the major roles in our daily life. As we can see in our education, uh, we need to use platforms such as Zoom, uh, Google Meet and Microsoft Teams to broadcast online education learning. As in healthcare, we also need to use such as MySajahtera app, which developed by the outsiders and not locals. So this leads to our problems identified, which is the shortage of information technology experts in Malaysia. So it is better if we could uh, develop the application or systems, uh, which is by our locals. Now, I do not deny that most that we do currently we do have a lot of IT graduates in Malaysia. But to find a quality and good IT graduate is very hard. So this, uh, I believe we as a team has identified the root of the problem, which is lack of exposure in computer science field among students. So based on this problem identified, we have come up with our goal, which is to provide exposure and insight about the computer science field among students of Pusat Tuition Bimbingan Jaya in an interactive and fun way. This is because our target of audience is from a secondary school student. So to give only a talk would be boring and discourage the student to join and participate in our talk. To achieve this goal, we have come up with several objectives, which are next. Uh, the first objective is to encourage students to use the online platform in completing the group work project. The online platform will consist of uh, Google Docs or maybe Google Spreadsheet. And the next objective is to boost students' confidence during presentation. This includes uh, creating slide and presentation. And the third objective is to cultivate students' creativity in solving problems. So to explain the activities that to achieve the objective, I would like to invite uh, Jamun to present the proposed activities. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jamun, and I'm going to present our proposed activity. We will conduct a webinar for two days, and each day lasts for three and a half hours. We have started our project preparation for uh, once the idea was proposed and approved on 2nd November 2020. Tentatively, the webinar will be conducted on 29 November and 6 December of 2020. For each day, it will start from 1 p.m. and end at 4.30 p.m. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, the project will be conducted in the form of webinar through the platform Google Meet. On the first day, we are going to have a talk mainly about the computer science and online collaborative tools. We will present about the contribution of computer science to the society, as well as the career prospect in this field. We will also teach them to use the common online collaborative tools such as Google Documents and also Google Drive. On the second day, we will conduct courses to show them how to utilize multimedia tools such as Google Slide for presentation and also Canva for poster designing. Next, we will also teach them to, te to deliver the presentation efficiently so that they can talk in front of the crowds more uh, briefly in their future. Mm, uh, before the webinar ends, we will ask the student to participate in an online quiz, which we do in Kahoot to strengthen their understanding throughout this project. Uh, next, I would like to present our activity plan. Uh, next, yeah. Uh, we, have we have divided the activities into seven. The first activity is the student registration. The sub activities included are registration form preparation, poster designing, registration form and poster distribution, uh, create WhatsApp group and also contact the student through WhatsApp. The duration for the first activity is from 10 November until 29 November. The second activity is the module preparation. 
The sub activities included are PowerPoint slide preparation, research, and also create online quiz in Kahoot. The duration for second activity is from 10 November until 28 November. Then we will have two days of test run. The first day of test run will, held on, will be held on 22nd November, while the second day will be held on 29 November. Uh, our first day of webinar will be conducted on 29 November and 6 December will be our second day of webinar. After the webinars, we will be having post activity from 7 December until 14 December. The sub activities included are post mortem documentation uh, and also the online project monitoring presentation on 14 December. Uh, report writing will be our last activity and it is expected to be started on 15 December until uh, 15 December of 2020 and finish on 11 January of 2021. Next, I'm going to talk about the group member and job role. OK, uh, we have divided the job into three teams. Uh, which, mm, which are managerial team, operational team, and technical team. The role included in managerial team are project manager and secretary. Their responsibility is to supervise, to prepare minutes, and also do the documentation stuff. The number of member in this team is two, uh, which Zachary will be our project manager, and I'll be the secretary. For operational team, the roles involved are the speaker, model designer, and also assistant model designer. Their responsibility is to deliver model and also prepare the models. Uh, there are four members in this team. They are Elaine, Chen Yi, Ifan, and also Azhan. Lastly, Farid and Azri will be our technician, and their responsibility is to provide technical assistance throughout this project. Uh, that's all from me, and I'll pass to Elaine. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Elaine Yong. So overall, our project aims to encourage the student to have a deeper understanding about the computer science. We expect to increase their general knowledge of computer science and introduce better presentation skills among them. We think that it is important for the teenagers nowadays to know the basic knowledge about computer science and how to use the basic functions of computers. And also by learning the effective presentation skills, the student can boost their self-confidence and avoid miscommunication with others. As the organizers of this webinar, we expect ourselves to improve our communication skills and also the project management skills. In the webinar, we will have to present our materials to the students. So we have to ensure that they understand our presentation and excite their interest in our topics. Most importantly, throughout the project, we can know better about risk management skills, which is extremely uh, critical to ensure any project can be conducted successfully despite any uncertainties. So, Next. Next one is the project timeline. OK, so basically our project began on 12 October 2020 until 18 January 2021. We separate it into four phases, which is planning, preparation, webinar, and last one is documentation and closing. So during the first stage, we start from week one to week four. We form a team and then we identify the project objective. Then we do our proposal and the presentation slide to propose our project. Next, during week five, from week five to week seven, we'll go into our preparation stage, which we prepare for our registration form and also do research on the module and prepare the module for the students. After that, 
during the third phase, we will carry out the webinar two days, two times. But before that, we will have two trial runs to ensure everything goes smoothly during the day. Then lastly, we will have documentation and closing. After we carry out the webinar, we will have a post-mortem to evaluate ourselves before we write our report. Then we will present our report after everything has done. So, next is our conclusion. So, our main goal is to give a better understanding of computer science to the students and interest them to strive to be in the industry. And that's all from us. And I would like to open the floor for questions. Okay. Uh, thank you. And then we can read it. So, group CG5, please ask uh, at least two questions. Uh, to this group. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question. You guys said I uh, get students each group from twelve. Percent. Will the students be selected by you guys or the teacher itself? Because you, you guys said the teacher will only have selected amount of students, right? How do you guys make sure that it will be twenty? students that were willing to register. OK, so I'm going to answer these questions. So we actually do not limit the number of students, but we only expect the 20 participants because the tuition center do not have that many students. So we are after considering like maybe some of them do not interested in our project uh, or this webinar. So after plus and minus the number of students, we come out the, to the conclusion that we expect there are 20 students. And we do not select them, but give. Uh, we will open this webinar for registration to those who are eligible in, in terms of age. Right? Uh, as long as they are from 12 to 7 years old, then they, they can just register to our webinar and we do not limit the number of participants. I, ho I hope I answer your questions. Thank you. Yeah, you answer my question. Thank you. Okay, uh, one more question. Okay, because I have a question, I have a uh, comment. Um, so how do you find this collaborator? You uh, said you said living on Jaya. Um, how, how do you find this collaborator? Do you know somebody, uh, the owner? Uh, yeah, actually the owner of the tuition center is my teacher and I worked before. I worked there before. Uh, um, Okay, and then uh, just a comment. You mentioned uh, your search search of IT experts in Malaysia. Uh, the My Suggestion app was developed by uh, a non-Malaysian company. Uh, I think there are other factors involved there. Um, I think we 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 do have uh, IT experts actually able to develop the My Suggestion app, but um, there are other reasons which I I don't want to talk here. Uh, and uh, for your objective, um, 
Um, I'm not sure how you want to measure those objectives. Uh, for example, uh, to boost students' confidence. Um, I would suggest if you can somehow uh, reward the objective so that uh, the objective, each objective is measurable. So at the end of the project, you can actually measure each of the objectives. Uh, maybe example, um, uh, how can I do that? Mm. I can't think of any, but uh, for example, creativity. Uh, so how, how can you measure that the student has increased creativity after you, you uh, after the project has been completed? Um, so think of ways, or if you think it's difficult, uh, you can just reword or change uh, the objective. But of course, it has to be uh, in line with whatever that you are doing at the moment. Uh, okay. Doctor, uh, may, I, uh, may I suggest that for the objectives, so for mm -hmm. example, like the creativity objectives, because we are going to use uh, Google Slide for our uh, uh, one of the topics of the webinar. So from that uh, Google Slide that we can uh, directly measure their works uh, during the webinar or after the webinar from uh, from what what their, their inputs on the Google Slide. So is that uh, is that uh, does that fulfill your criteria on the objectives there? So you mean the students need to create a presentation using Google Slides, is it? Yes, because it's going to be the the, the webinar that for that particular topic is going to be uh, hands on as well as a, a, a theoretical uh, uh, way of delivery. So probably uh, at the end of the that top that particular topic, there will be a Google slide that is uh, uh, edited by them and uh, has been uh, used and uh, you know uh, edited by them. So is that uh, enough as a measurable uh, component? Mm, or maybe you can like, create a survey form for them to fill in. Like for example, uh, have you used Google Slide before so they can put in the zero? So you put a score for each of the question. So you tally all, all the all the scores and maybe the score is like five. And then after the after the after the talk or after they have managed to do the site, so you, you gave them the same set of uh, uh, question set and then you tally the scores together and to, to, to see whether there's an increase in the score, something like that. Or, or you can, like what you said, you can yes, you can also, um, you can ask them to do it uh, before you actually conduct the course, ask them to create a presentation and then after that you can, you can give a score to the slide that, that they have created before and after you have given the talk. So that is also one way or something similar to that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, okay, thank you, Doctor. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um. And then we're going to do. Okay. The next group. Um. So so we're not really different. Uh. Back up the different. Of our faculty. Um. So think beyond is going to ask questions. <coughs> really good, okay. yeah, think beyond is uh, stand by and ask what is the Okay, whenever you're ready, you can type. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to Dr. Reza and my fellow friends. Uh, we are from Group Bakal Bakal Dikan. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce my group. Our group consists of First, there is me for you as a project manager. Next, we have Aina as our NGO consultant. And then we have Akram and Akman as our graphic designer. Next, we have uh, and Kyrene as our project developer. We have Azua as our project developer. And Khan as our project support. Mm -hmm. uh, then we will do a presentation of our Tulam proposal. Sorry, so we have problem with the July. by the Ministry of Education, defined as a form of experimental education in which today we can see the, the community need with practices. This essentially designed to promote students. One, one of the uh, from Sulam's initiative is to produce a holistic entrepreneurial graduate. For our Sulam one of the problems by rehab is the online system and exposure in their school. Sulam has a school page with the page and the interest since most of the posts only able to get 10 likes every So we, we decided that we a logical solution because uh, it can set easily in the middle by acquiring a certain account unlike Facebook and Twitter. I would like to pass to collaboration. Collaborator. Next slide. 
Okay, so uh, for the collaborator for our project is NGO, uh, which is a uh, Reproductive Health uh, Association of Kelantan, uh, short form for REHA, uh, which provide uh, sexual and reproductive health uh, service to women, men and young people in Kelantan. So uh, how we manage to contact with the uh, NGO is through uh, one of our group member, which is Aina. <coughs> Aina has approached uh, the uh, state member, uh, state uh, manager of the REHA and discuss about the uh, current problem that they face. So um, the manager, manager said that um, since uh, they only operate, operate through Facebook and Twitter, uh, there are some people who cannot access to the um, uh, their page. Those who don't have a uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter account cannot access to their page. So uh, to settle, to solve the problem, we decided to create a website for them, for the NGO. So I will pass to the next presenter. So, okay, so good afternoon to Dr. and to my fellow friends. So, our target group for this project is the resident of the Kantan state. So, you can see the demographic data. The, the demographic data shows that um, the total population of Kelantan is 1,906,700. So 94% from them is Malay and the others 6% which is uh, orang asli, Chinese and Siamese. So the, religi the religion data shows that 96.2% is Muslim and the others 1% and Buddhist is 3.2. So from this group of data, we will be more focusing more on men, uh, women, adolescents and elderly. So the reason is because uh, these four group of people are more prone to this sexual health problem as they grow older. Uh, for example, like uh, married men and women might also have families. So it is important for them to know about family planning and family issues. Uh, maybe like domestic violence and so on. And as for the elderly, uh, they will experience the uh, senior senior sexual problem like menopause uh, and maybe the elderly who have been uh, heavy smokers then might have erectile dysfunction so with rehab helps they can seek help and ease and solve their sexual related problem okay next So, the problems or needs that we have identified during our planning of this project um, is that uh, Reha is not really well known in Kelantan itself. Um, uh, many do not know about that Reha is actually one of the Federation of Reproductive Health and Association Malaysia. Yeah, it is a national level association and Reha is the representative for Kelantan state. So, it is a disappointing thing for people of Kelantan to not be aware of the existence of REHA. Uh, this is because REHA is the only non-governmental organization in Kelantan that provides sexual and reproductive health services to the community. Um, so, Kelantanese people should know the organization who is willing to help them and cater the problems in terms of sexual and reproductive health. So, the second uh, is uh, Rehab lacks the method to expose and advertise about their awareness and services. So, like, uh, just like what Akram said, that um, Rehab only had engaged with two social media accounts, which are Facebook and Twitter. So, the downside of this, not every person has an FB or Twitter account. So, their advertisement or announcement did not reach to this group of people. Uh, and this has limit, limited their reach out to the community. So we help from this website development, uh, we can reach more to this type of people. And lastly, that uh, uh, the targeted 
groups that we are proposing are not well aware of their issues of their own sexual and reproductive health and problems the targeted group uh, which is the which are the men women adolescents and elderly uh, they are currently going through the phase of sexual and reproductive issues in their life so it is important for them to gain knowledge and awareness of the issues so that uh, they can be healthy until they yeah and live longer so that's and i will pass to akram thank you uh, so the the project objective eh. Okay, so the project objective for our project is to increase the new and returning visitor satisfaction by measuring the time that the visitor spend per visit. Uh, so when we create a new website, we hope that the number of the returning visitor will increase. Lah. So the second one is to make the uh, rehab contact information easier to be found through the internet. This is because uh, internet, uh, many people use the internet to find information and everyone can actually access the internet. Uh, so th the third one is to increase the amount of traffic coming to the website. So uh, basically the number of uh, visitors will increase. Lah. So uh, the fourth one, uh, to find which page or type of information have uh, the best performance. Uh, finally, to reduce the money spent by Reha in promoting their program and service. Because uh, uh, the Reha uh, no more need uh, to spend money because we uh, provide the free, uh, free website which will be exposed to everyone in the internet. Okay, that's all. Next. Uh, some of the proposed activity uh, during this project is shown, shown in the table. First, we have interviewing Rehab to seek collaboration. Uh, this will be led by our NGO consultant, Aina. Uh, during this activity, uh, what we want to gain is the information about the problem and the uh, in the the needs for the website. Next, we have development and designing of the website. First, we will begin with the designing of the website. Our designer Akram and Akram uh, made the model of prototype of the website design to be given to the Reha. Uh, rehab will choose one one which they desire. Once the rehab already choose, we will start with the development. The, the development process is led by our web developer, uh, Islan and Kayaki. We will be using Wix and all the requirements have already been given from rehab itself. And lastly, we have the presentation of the website. First, we, we will do a presentation to the rehab itself to make sure they are uh, they are satisfied with the result. Next, we will do a presentation of the website to our coordinator. So those who are responsible for this activity is PIT, which is a project implementation team, which is all of the group members. So for group member and joint world, uh, we have set up, uh, we have divided six roles uh, to our team members. We, um, so the first one obviously is the project management, uh, project manager. William is the, uh, our project manager and he is an AI student and he has led many, uh, multiple college projects before. So he has five job scopes in our project, which is Ensure project is completed within the time given. Coordinate team members. Oversee oversee all incoming and outgoing documentation. Conduct project reviews and manage project progress. Lead and lead project planning sessions. So for uh, web software authors, me and Kyle uh, have been given roles as web software authors, which is basically making the website. So um, a little background for Kyle, he uh, he is a software engineering student. Um, my, me as well, and we both have sev done several project developments uh, projects on GitHub. Uh, so our, both of our job scopes is basically maintaining and update the website, create and test the website, troubleshoot website problems, and direct and perform website updates. 
uh, for our support group, as well uh, as be given the role of the support group, which is basically um, she, she will be the main hub for information whenever we need uh, more su support, basically. So uh, to be more specific, her uh, job scope would be providing technical support to team members within the organization and to rehab when required. She will also assist team members and clients, maintain and update technical documents and procedures, and also develop reports for the team. Um, now for the project coordinator, Hani has been appointed as the project coordinator. So he bas she basically uh, coordinates the whole project, uh, sees how uh, if the project uh, is going on, and uh, do gun chat and so on. So her job scope is basically develop the timeline and gun chat create schedules and oversee progress to make sure goals are met on time and assist project manager with organizing and controlling project activities. And also she sets up all the meetings since she is the project coordinator. Now for the graphic designers, Akram and Akmar has have been appointed as graphic designers. So they basically uh, design the whole website. Um, their job scope is basically establish design guidelines, standards and best practices conceptualize creative ideas with rehab requirements, produce many sample sites, demonstrate and receive feedback from sample sites, and also incorporate functionalities and features into website. And lastly, our NGO consultant has been uh, given to Aina since she is the one who found the NGO in the first place, and also because she lives in, in Kelantan and, in, and Rehab is also in Kelantan. So her job scope is basically she will act as the middle woman between our organization and Rehab. She will collaborate effectively with Rehab, develop and deliver compelling content to Rehab and meet with Rehab to discuss requirements regularly so that our website will be made according to their, uh, their requirements. So now uh, I will pass to Akram for the expected outcome. Okay, so uh, the expected outcome. Okay, sir. Uh, so expected outcome for the project is clearly uh, the creation of a new website, which will allow the user, uh, will which will have the user friendly navigation and also web content features. Uh, so the impact to the society is that uh, more people will be exposed to the information regarding health and sexual issues. Uh, so the those who do not have an account, Facebook account or Twitter account, can access their website page to uh, check their service and programs. So the impact to, the, our, to our group is that we were able to uh, learn the importance of teamwork uh, because without the support of our, uh, all members, we will not be able to complete the project successfully. Uh, so, uh, for example, to create a website, we need uh, a designer, a creator and editor. So without any one of those, we, can, uh, we, we will not be able to complete the project. Uh, secondly, we, we will also be able to learn about the uh, web development where uh, a website, to create a website, you need a uh, web hosting, web creator, web creator and also domain system. Finally, um, we will be able to improve uh, thinking and communication skill where we, ha we have to be creative to create a website. That's all. That's all from me. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Okay, so for the project timeline, as you can see from the timeline, from the gun chat, we have three phases of the timeline. First is preparation and planning, development and designing, and lastly, execution. So we will be doing phase one of our timeline from week one to week five, and then our phase two will be from week six to week 10, and then our third phase, which is our last phase, executing, presenting works and so on, will be from week 11 to week 14. So now I will pass on to Koyum to conclude the presentation. In conclusion, one of the problems faced by Reha is the lack of exposure and interaction from the social pages. This problem comes from the comes from because uh, our target group, especially the elderly and those only living in the rural area, have no access to social media. We believe that developing a website is the best solution to this problem. The, the, 
the impact to the society is that more uh, people, especially Perantanese residents, will be exposed and be uh, will be exposed and able to get services and information from Reha. So that's all from our team. Now I would like to open open the session to questions. Okay, hello. Uh, okay. I am Jeb from Group Team Beyond. So I have two questions. The first is, uh, do you pay for the domain? And the next question is, who will handle the website after the project is done? Okay. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Okay, okay. Okay, so for the first question about the domain name, uh, Reha has agreed. Uh, Reha has agreed to pay for the domain name. So, basically, they're the ones who be sponsoring the website and so on. So, and for the second question, um, they've also agreed that after we've created the website and manage it a little bit during our timeline, they will uh, continue to manage it for themselves after we've given them the works and stuff. So, yeah, hope that answers your question, Jet. Yeah? Okay, yes, yes. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for the question. Um, okay. Um, I'm looking at one of your objectives. Just wondering how um, how do you plan to um, keep track on the number of returning visitors? I think it's a technical solution, right? <clears throat> so how do you uh, keep track of the returning visitors to the website and, and measure that, yeah, so we have increased in the number of returning visitors. I will answer this question. So we will be creating the website using Wix. Uh, inside the Wix, there is a feature to track the number of uh, visitors to that website. So we'll be using that feature. Mm -hmm. So you are able to track returning visitors, yeah? not just visitors, but returning visitors. We're not sure about the returning visitor, but uh, to check the number of visitors, we're using Wix feature. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, to partially answer that, I think you can do that by using cookies. Uh, uh, but I'm not sure how exactly, but maybe uh, using cookies is one way of tracking returning visitors. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, thank you. Um, our future deans okay, for your presentation. Okay, uh, okay next up is right, next up is the uh, group five. Five. So you're up next. <coughs> and um, teams group number seven is going to ask the question. Okay, so whenever you're ready, um, you can start your presentation.
Uh, okay, I guess I'll proceed in my presentation first. Everyone can see my slide, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, a very good evening, I bid to Dr. Reza and my fellow friends. Uh, my name is Guampo. I'm the group leader for TG5. Okay. And my, today, my group and I will be presenting a proposal report on a project called Hungry No More. So, let's move on. Uh, this is just a small content. Uh, so let's give you a, a little perspective on what Hungry No More is about. So Hungry No More is a project which uses a fundraising platform to raise funds for a non-governmental organization, Kachara Soup Kitchen. So our team DG5 consists of eight like-minded individuals from the University of Malaya, where we share the same goal, which is to tackle hunger. So due to the recent pandemic outbreak, uh, many under, underprivileged Malaysians have faced huge impact from the economy recession. Many were laid off from work and some even went homeless. Therefore, our team decided to help Kachara Soup Kitchen to raise sufficient funds to provide for the needy. Uh, our target for, from this project is to fundraise 1,000 ringgit for Kachara Soup Kitchen where they will use the money to provide nutritional meals, medical support and shelter for the homeless. So moving on to the project uh, introduction, uh, we're talking about the overview of this project and the NGO that we collaborated and also the target group of this project. So let's jump straight to the project overview. So as you can see, Hungry No More is a project based on Service Learning Malaysia University for Society, SULAM. It's an initiative by the Ministry of Education to address the shift one of Malaysia Education Blueprint 2015 to 2025, higher education. So SULAM is is important as it is a structured service activity that meets identified community needs to achieve desired learning outcomes in such a way as to enhance sense of personal values and civic responsibility. So behind, behind the idea of our project is that we obtain the data from the Banwa statistic and it shows that Malaysia's unemployment rate is now, is now the highest in the decade at 3.9% in March 2020 compared to 3.6% back in June 2010. So the statistic also showed that the number of unemployed persons increased by 17.1% to 610,500 in March as compared to 521,000 in the same month in 2019. So the high unemployment rate reflects the negative impact of the movement control order implemented by the federal government of Malaysia in response to the COVID-19 pandemic on 18 March 2020. Uh, has accurate figures for the homeless are not available yet, but with the current unemployment rate, it is no it is no doubt that many Malaysians are losing the ability to pay for their rents and probably eventually will become homeless. With that being said, uh, a concerted effort is required to bring an end to homelessness in Malaysia. Uh, as you can see, food is arguably the most important resource needed by the homeless community. Therefore, we hereby propose a fundraising campaign in order to raise sufficient funds to provide food and shelter for the homeless. Okay, so the non-governmental organization that we decided to approach is Kachara Soup Kitchen. So Kachara Soup Kitchen is a registered non-profit non organization which inspires and organizes volunteers to distribute food to the homeless and urban poor in Kuala Lumpur Penang, Johor Bahru, Ipoh, and Kuantan. So, uh, Kajaya Soup Kitchen was established in 2006 as a community action group that offers foods, drinks, and basic medical first aid to those in need, regardless of their race or religion. Uh, this brings to life of Kajaya Soup Kitchen's motto, which is hunger knows no barriers. So, uh, as you can see from all these photos, from all these images here, uh, Kajaya Soup Kitchen's motto actually extends to the ever-expanding team of volunteers who come from all walks of life, all races, religion, and culture. So what connects and binds them all is used is their shared common goal of helping others. So Kajaya Soup Kitchen's uh, activities focus on gaining the trust of our friends on the street and to gather information about their needs. 
So Kitchen Soup Kitchen's mission is to provide nutritional meals and medical support, a place of refuge and the training skills for the homeless to re-enter and contribute to society. Uh, this mission will require the continuation of the street food program maintenance and the mobile van to assist in street food distribution, uh, maintenance of the permanent building to offer food and communal services. So the target group of this project uh, are, the ho are the people that suffer from homelessness. Uh, we believe that homeless people have little to no access to clean water and food. Therefore, uh, this project will mainly focus on raising money to provide uh, physiological needs to the homeless, which includes food, water, shelter, and warmth. So uh, the size of this targeted group is not fixed as it is dependent on the amount of funds raised. Uh, we believe that if we are able to achieve our goal by successfully fundraising 1,000 ringgit, we, believe, uh, we, we think that we are able to help at least 10 homeless people to get back on their feet. And also the target group, uh, there, there will be no criteria for this target group has the motto of Kajara Soup Kitchen once said that hunger knows no barriers. So we will extend our help to all underprivileged Malaysian regardless of their race, religion, gender, age, and etc. So moving on to the problem statement, I'll pass the Mike, I was to say to Ming Jun to present. Thank you, Kampo. And I would like to present problem or needs identified. Our group realized the needs for the poor and homeless community in Malaysia. According to Malaysia's Priority Line Income PLE, the percentage of absolute priority rate in Malaysia is 5.6% in 2019. Although the percentage seems to be not very significant, is a very serious problem to face honestly. Homeless and poverty in Malaysia uh, is mainly caused by low income, unemployment, domestic violence, and maybe also low level of education in Malaysia. Malaysia is a country which hopes to become in a list of developed countries. So poverty as well as, well as the homeless issue in Malaysia needs to be solved to help in growth of economy of Malaysia. Next, recently, the COVID-19 pandemic outbreaks make the society panic as the COVID-19 risk is high and the case of COVID-19 increased drastically. According to the International Labour Organization, 1.25 billion workers rep representing 38% of the global workforce will, pay, will face pay cuts or layoffs. In Malaysia, Job loss in Malaysia had increased by 42% in the first three months of 2020, and it will maybe increase in these few months also. This outbreak caused the income for most of the people to decrease, and many zones have been labelled as red zone because of this COVID-19. As a result, movement of people are restricted so that every business for every shop may be affected. This is because less customer will be visit to the shop and they, need, they still need to pay the rental as well as electric bills or any bills required. Consequently, more people are poor and have no sufficient income to support their daily life. Um, besides that, people who are poor and homeless need more care. Their basic needs such as food, clothing, basic medical, health care and shelter are huge problem for them as they have no abilities to solve all this by themselves. Arrangement of some basic needs can help them by giving them sufficient time to find jobs or money sources. After interacting and having some understanding of them, some suitable jobs can be introduced to them to overcome poverty. So in a nutshell, our group decides to carry out the plan Hunger No More, which is doing fundraising in order to help Kachera Soap Kitchen, where this non-governmental organization aim to contribute to the Society of Malaysia in scope of the urban poor and homeless community. Thank you. That's all for me. I will pass to my next teammates. Mm. Hello, everyone. For Hungry No More Project, we have three main objectives. 
our first of objective is to raise uh, 1,000 ringgit from our fundraising campaign because 1,000 is not so difficult for us to fundraise and uh, we believe it is enough to help uh, at least five or 10 people. Secondly, to provide the basic necessities for the underprivileged Malaysians. And finally, to gain and instill personal value and civic responsibility into the minds of the public. All members in our group are trying our best to complete this project, make our project into reality. Apart from that, we believe that our project will appeal to more and more people in our society to hire and help the homeless community. Okay, yeah, so next uh, is turn to the next presenter to present the proposed activity. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, doctor and my fellow friends. So my name is Wong Weiliang and I'm going to present proposed activities. So as my members mentioned just now, we are going to fundraise for Kachara Soup Kitchen. So what we are going to do is we will be fundraising 1000 ringgit in a month. And uh, this campaign will be held on 13 November until 13 December 2020. So the platform we are using will be simply giving website because it is very simple and convenient to be used. And then we are also going to make do some preparations like posters, videos or posts, even the messages that we are going to put in uh, was set to promote our campaign. And then lastly is we will be using the social media to spread our link. Uh, uh, next slide, please. So this is uh, our activity plan table. So our first activity is we will be creating an account on Simply Giving website and we plan to do it uh, tomorrow since it is easy. So I just put it one day. And then the second one is preparation of promoting our project. Since we are going to uh, ask people to fundraise us, right? So we are going to prepare some stuff like videos, uh, posts in, in the, on the Instagram, stuff like this. And then after all the preparations, we get our stuff ready and then we will proceed to distribute our fundraising link. And we plan to finish distributing our fundraising link by 20 November 2020. So after we distribute our link, we also post updates periodically regarding our project so that uh, those people who donate to us, they will get the information on how much we have donated and then how how is our progress. And then lastly is our meetings with uh, everyone because even uh, before meeting or during uh, before the project, during the project or after the project, we also will have meetings so that we can discuss what we have done and then maybe what mistake we have done so that we can improve better. And that's all from me. So and I'm going to pass on to uh, Chia Xin. Thank you. Hello, good evening, doctor and everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, OK. Uh, my name is Se Cha Shin. I will be presenting the part about group members and job roles. First of all, the leader of our group will be member Ko Guan Po. He is responsible for managing the discussion, assigning roles and tasks to each member and monitoring the progress of tests. Next member, Tilaga Anandan, will be our secretary. She will record meeting details, track achievement of basic requirements and maintain effective records and administration. While at the same time, member Xiao Mingjun will be the vice secretary. He will ensure meetings are effectively organized and managed, and he will be responsible for compiling every document. Furthermore, the treasurer of our group will be member Wong Wei Liang. He will do the cost estimation for each test. Financial planning and budgeting will also be his job, and he will do the general financial oversight throughout the project. At the time when I'm the vice treasurer, I will manage the funds obtained and do the bookkeeping and record keeping. Moreover, member Sun Shihan is the recorder of our group. She will take notes on important thoughts expressed in meetings. At the same time, she will also be the 
liaison between group and instructor. On the other hand, the summarizer of our group will be member Tuan Yu Hao. Besides being the liaison between group and organizer, he will also restate the group's conclusion and answer. Lastly, member Ilaya Rasi Vijay Kumran will be our resources collector. She will be responsible for collecting required materials for the project and also allocates resources to support project implementation. Well, that's all for my part and my groupmate will continue the next part. Thank you. Okay, we have five minutes, five more minutes. So are you presenting on the expected outcome and also the impact of the fundraising towards the target group, the society and also our group? So starting with the expected outcome, the first outcome is that we are expecting we will be able to collect at least an amount of 1,000 ringgit of fundraising for the Kuchero subscription. We are hoping that we could be able to at least help uh, 10 homeless people with this money. The next outcome is obviously we are expecting that we will further help accomplish the Kuchero subscription mission to provide sustenance and basic medical care for the homeless and the urban poor. And the last one is we are expecting to expose Kuchero subscription to the public as one of the trusted organizations that helps the homeless in Malaysia and indirectly help them in finding new volunteers and fundraisers that would be interested in donating to this organization. So we are really hoping that more after this project, more people will uh, donate to this or uh, organization and support them. So next slide. Right. So uh, moving on to impact on target group and society, the first one is to break the cycle of homelessness, one person, one family at a time. So uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, our uh, group uh, believes that homelessness has an effect throughout the community. It impacts the availability of healthcare resources, time and safety. So I think uh, this fundraising will benefit both the homeless and the society to break the cycle of homelessness one person, one family at a time. So even though we might not be able to help dozens of people in one go, we believe that helping even a few would bring out some changes. So for the next impact, uh, we think that uh, through this project, we would be able uh, through this project, uh, we think that we would be able to help at least 10 of the homeless to take a new list of life and work for a better future. So uh, our group believes that homelessness is just temporary. Sometimes all they need is uh, someone to help them to get back on their feet. Sometimes all they need is uh, basic necessities and if they are provided with them, they will be able to rise above their tough circumstances and live a better life. Um, moving on to impact on our group. Okay, so the first one is uh, we are expecting that uh, through the project, we will be able to improve personal development skills. Uh, one of it is we think that this project will make us become more mindful to acknowledge the abundance and appreciate what is already a part of our life. The second one is uh, I think that this project will help us build a sense of empowerment within us. So to be honest, uh, as a student, uh, we do not often have the resources to like bring out change to the community. Uh, to the community, but through this fundraising project, we believe that we can acquire the monetary means uh, necessary to begin the process of change. We trust that this project will make us realize that we too have the ability to make positive changes in the community. And the last one is on teamwork. Uh, ability to have a uh, solid team play skills, uh, crucial uh, soft skills. So I think that working with the other members in reaching the team goals will prepare us to become a better team player. And we believe that these skills will be very helpful for us uh, in the future when we are in the working environment. So I'll pass to Elaine. Good evening, Doctor. So I'm going to present about the project timeline. As we discussed just now, our project is uh, project duration is one month. So we plan to do our project 
13 November until 13 December. So I, I did the timeline based on that uh, date. So there are several tasks we did. We did. First one is creating an account on Simply Giving website. So we're still in progress doing that task. Second thing is preparation, preparation of promoting our project. So it's still in pending distribution of our fundraising link, posting updates periodically regarding our project, and meetings with all the team members. Next. Thank you. Uh, okay, so in conclusion, uh, many Malaysians in poverty have been hit hard by the economic recession. Okay, maybe not just in poverty, everyone in Malaysia has been hit hard by the economic recession. So, we believe that homelessness is not someone else's problem. It has a ripple effect on the entire community. So, it affects the availability of medical resources, crime and safety, labour and also the uses of taxes. Uh, therefore, our group strongly believes that homelessness is only temporary and all they need is someone to help them in, help them to stand up again. So immediate and appropriate actions need to be taken as soon as possible. We believe that the outcome of this project will benefit the society as a whole. And we sincerely hope that our proposal will be approved and conducted on the date plan. Thank you for your time and consideration. You guys have any questions? Uh, thank you. Uh, good advice. Uh, so, uh, teams group, can you ask two questions? Um, in this case, um, hello, my name is Haikal. This is the representative of team teams. So, um, question. The first question is, um, what happens if you guys don't reach the targeted donation? And the second question is. Um, what are the challenges faced by you guys in handling this project? That's all from me, thank you. Uh, okay, so if you are unable to reach our target of 1,000 ringgit donation, go on with the project as I believe that we can at least uh, get at least raise a certain amount, a significant amount that is that can be useful for the for the uh, NGO. And for your second question, uh, what challenges we think we'll face will be actually, I guess, getting getting the spreading the message, and also we are not we are not really sure whether the 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 people in the society are willing to donate at, at this time of the of the year. Has uh, as you can see, the COVID nineteen has been. COVID-19 cases has been rising and everybody has been forced to stay at home or work from home. So I guess we will just hope for our best and we will also like try our best to overcome this situation. I hope I answer your question. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Haika, for the question. Um, I have a comment, a uh, question on your one of your objectives. You state that uh, one of the objectives is to provide basic necessities, right? So, are you actually um, going to provide uh, these necessities as well, or just uh, raising funds for uh, Puchara soup kitchen? Uh, so, to be, uh, to be honest, uh, initially. Uh, when I approached Kajara Soup Kitchen, they actually wanted uh, voluntary manpower more, more than the donation has. Uh, I think because of this situation in Malaysia right now, the COVID-19 situation, many people are not volunteering and so they are lacking of manpower. But when I told them that we, we, we are advised not to do, uh, we are advised to do a no contact project, so they actually suggested us to do fundraising instead. So as for the objective that I mentioned just now, uh, it will actually be the, the foods and also the essential will actually be done by the Pichara Soup Kitchen. We are actually just giving them the money and 
Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Um, yeah, so perhaps you can uh, maybe remove that objective and see something okay. that. You, can I, or can I write uh, like you indirectly contribute basic necessity to the homeless? Um, so basically, you're raising funds, you're giving money to the yeah. NDO, right? Indirectly. I think, um, yeah, it indirectly, um, really, they will, uh, basically, they can do anything with the money that you have uh, provided. Um, but since you also have other objectives as well, uh, for example, um, to gain an instead personal values, uh, I think. Is also something that is mm, not easily measured. But, um, so maybe you can uh, look back at your objective and uh, state something that you can uh, actually measure okay, uh, before and after you have uh, completed your project. Right? Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, group five. So that is the end of our presentation session for today. So, so five minutes. You still within the our lecture uh, slot. Uh, so to conclude, I think um, all of your proposals are are very good. Okay. Uh, you just need to <coughs> ensure that. Uh, the objectives that you have stated are measurable, okay, meaning that you can show uh, a difference in terms of before and after, okay, for example. Um, and then if you manage to complete your project earlier or if you have reached your target, uh, for example, you want to meet the 1,000 ringgit target and you have reached it earlier than expected, you can either continue or you can uh, wrap up your project. Uh, it's up to you. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, uh, you can still um, reword your objective so that it is measurable. And you need to submit your report by tomorrow. Okay. Um, and the slides as well. I had I did not provide a link for the slides, but I will do that uh, after this. So you need to uh, submit two things. So one is the report and one is the slide. So there's two separate links for that. And only the group leader needs to submit. Okay, so one group, uh, one submission for the report and also for the slide. And for the talk, uh, uh, before that, I think um, one of you asked for an official letter stating that you are UM student. We shall provide that letter. Uh, I'm not sure if it's ready or not. I need to ask uh, the coordinator of this course whether the letter is ready. Uh, if it's ready, I will give it to all of you so that you can use to give, give it to your collaborator. So to ensure that you are actually students of UN. Um, and lastly, don't forget to uh, fill in the, the title of your talk. Okay, uh, So I have uh, posted the link for you to submit the title of your talk uh, in the chat here. So we're going to have uh, maybe between six uh, presentations per lecture session. So I hope you can submit your titles as soon as possible. Um, by uh, if possible by uh, because we're gonna um, I, I need to create a schedule for your presentation so if possible by Thursday okay uh, today is Monday right okay uh, by Thursday please submit um, the title to that particular link because I need to create a schedule so uh, so some of you will need to present on Monday. Okay, so you just uh, so to those who the titles who have been approved, so you can continue. So those who have yet to submit, please submit, please do so uh, so that I can approve and you can start 
uh, preparing any material related to your talk. Okay. <coughs> Excel, um, yeah, the Excel is for the list of approved talk. Um, uh, sorry, the wrong link. Uh, it's not that link. Um, yeah. um, Sorry, wrong thing. Uh, yeah, so the so I have just posted another link. So it's supposed to be a Google form. Um, so the Excel sheet is for you to check whether uh, your title has been approved or not. So the link that I have just posted. So. It will bring you to a Google form where you need to fill in your name and uh, metric number and three titles that uh, 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 based on preference. Okay, so the first topic is the topic that you really want to present. So the second topic is the second uh, uh, topic that you want to present. The third <coughs> one is optional. You, if you want to put it or if you don't want to put it, so it's fine. Uh, but please um, fill in the the Google form link that I have sent. Okay, um, there's nothing else. Uh, I'll see you next week. And remember that uh, some of you will need to present your talk on Monday as well. Okay, so if you guys uh, submit uh, everything uh, as fast as you can, so I can I can release the schedule uh, earlier than Thursday. Right. Uh, OK, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your effort. And I hope that uh, all your projects will go will run smoothly as planned. OK, uh, right. uh, goodbye and see you next week. Thank you, Dr. Right, thank you. Uh, Dr. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, for the proposal, uh, so where should I submit for as as a for the group leader? Yeah. Uh, the link to submit is at Spectrum. So you need to submit the report and also the presentation slide. So the link for the site has not been posted yet. I will do it uh, mm -hmm. after this. But the link for the report uh, is already there. Okay, thank you, Dr. Right.